Today on Review This Thing, we're gonna review this thing, the Sako S20 Hunter. This is Adrian with Review This Thing, and by now you've hopefully already seen our quick look at the Sako S20 Hunter, as well as the video where we took it to the range to get it sighted in. I've shot it a ton, and I hunted all deer season with it last year, so I'm ready to tell you what I think. Let's review this thing. You know the drill, let's cover the facts. The first part is fit. There are a few key things that I think about when it comes to the fit of a rifle. For me, the first part is length of pull. The Sako S20 Hunter has an adjustable length of pull. The way that I have it set up, it measures just shy of 13 and a half inches. And it comes with three spacers, so you can get it up to about 14 inches. I'm 5'4 and apparently have very short arms, so all of that adjustability is great for me. I'm able to get it at a very comfortable length of pull. The next thing that I think about is how well will the cheek weld fit? If you've watched any of our other rifle reviews, you know that I have a pretty terrible time getting an actual cheek weld versus a chin weld. And I've heard a lot of women say the same thing. So the S20 Hunter actually comes with a very easily adjustable cheek comb. It has six different levels, so you should be able to find a position where your eye is gonna line up with the field of view in your scope, making it a lot easier to relax and make a comfortable shot. Another aspect of fit I look at is how easily can I reach the trigger. With several hunting rifles out there, the distance from the grip to the trigger for me is always a little bit too long. With this thumb hole stock and the basically vertical front of the grip, then that's not an issue at all. And the inside of the grip is shaped so that it curves with your palm and gives your thumb a nice place to rest. And the front of it is textured, so that's gonna make it even easier to maintain a good grip. The only thing that I really don't like about fit is just the overall size. The way that I have it set up right now with this Burris Veracity pH scope, which we have a field test coming very soon, so you may want to subscribe so you don't miss that. But the total weight is over 10 pounds, and it's right at 47 inches. Now when I hunted with it, I had a suppressor on it, which made it even longer. Carrying it across the cow pasture just to get to my stand was pretty easy, but whenever we took to the woods and had to go through some trees or down and up a pretty deep creek bed, it was definitely a bit bigger than I was comfortable with and heavier. Overall, the fit of the Sako S20 Hunter is so adjustable, it's really hard to get the stock not to fit you. Now I do love the precision and the muzzle velocity with that 24.4 inch barrel, but I would really like to try one out in a 20 inch barrel. And I would like to try that precision stock. Overall, the Sako S20 Hunter fit me perfectly, except for the weight and the length of the gun. And with all the adjustability, you should be able to get it to fit you perfectly as well. I'm gonna take a little bit off because of the overall size and give fit a 4.8 out of five. Now is the Sako S20 Hunter as advertised? The first thing they advertise is that it is a true hybrid rifle. It's designed with a separate rear stock and forend. So you can use this hunter setup like I have, but then they also have that precision that I mentioned, and it's meant to be easily switched between the two. And you can mix and match parts. So basically you can set it up however you want. In addition to that, they advertise that it's modifiable because of all the accessories. So you can see the muzzle brake I mentioned that this particular model came with. On the precision version, you can also add a monopod, a barricade stop, and a thumb rest, as well as a scope mount and arca rails. They also advertised a cold forged barrel that does not have a break-in process. I can 100% attest to that. When you finish this video, go watch our sighting in video. I was blown away at the groups we got immediately out of the box, especially with the Sako ammo that they sent over with it. This is one of the most accurate guns I've ever shot. So I have to say that the Sako S2000 does what they say and give it a five out of five. Now on to construction and durability. The Sako S2000 comes in a variety of calibers, configurations, barrel lengths, and stock color options. This particular version has the first light fusion camo pattern, and this is a 308. It has an aluminum chassis inside the stock that increases stability and accuracy. It has front and rear QD mounts and swivel studs, so you can use either when attaching your sling. The trigger is a single stage adjustable trigger. Out of the box, we measured trigger pull at like one pound, five ounces, so we haven't adjusted it at all. It's super smooth and it shoots like a dream. 
In addition to adjusting the trigger pull weight, you can also slide it forward or backward to make that reach perfect. Another feature that I really like is the flush mount magazine. There's a pretty spacious cutout in the front of the magazine, so you can easily hit the release even with a glove on. We're gonna move back a bit and look at the two position thumb safety. The position is very natural and it's smooth and easy to work. It does have a safety function so that you cannot work the bolt when the gun is on safe, unless you push that little button in the front. When I first did the quick look, I didn't know that, but you guys helped me out and made hunting with this thing much easier. This rifle has a nice oversized bolt handle and it only has a 60 degree bolt throw. So it's really quick and smooth and you're never gonna risk running into your scope. Plus the action itself is incredibly smooth out of the box. One feature I thought was really neat is that there is a rail that is actually part of the rifle itself. So we didn't have to go buy another rail and it's automatically torqued properly. Finishing us off, you can see that this model has a tungsten Cerakoted bolt, action, and barrel. The 308 has a listed 24.4 inch fluted barrel with a 1 and 11 twist, and it's threaded 5 8 by 24, which you know that we love. This particular model came with this radial muzzle brake. It does a fantastic job at mitigating recoil. And as I said before, it was very easy to just take that off and direct thread my suppressor right on there for hunting season. So overall construction, durability, there's some awesome features we talked about in fit as well as here. So I'm gonna have to give it a five out of five. Now onto testimonials and reviews. I looked around a lot to try to find negative reviews about this rifle, but there basically were none. So I kept digging to try to find at least a couple of cons that I wouldn't even really call complaints. One person said that that safety wasn't really intuitive. At first, it was pretty annoying, but once I learned how to work it, good to go. Another person just mentioned that it would be too heavy for a mountain rifle. And as I already talked about, I absolutely agree. For me, definitely too big and too heavy. And then finally, somebody just mentioned that they didn't understand why if they were gonna mount a rail, they didn't make it a 20 MOA rail. I could see that. It seems touting it as a precision rifle as well. They may have considered more of that long range shooting, but I have shot this out to about 450 yards and it's done fantastic. You know what we do for testimonials and reviews? We tell you the score we found. So we gotta give it a five out of five. Now the reason that you stayed, should you buy this thing? As always, it completely depends on what it is you're looking for. If what you want is a lightweight, compact rifle to hike around the mountains or you're gonna be in a lot of thick brush and trees, then probably not the one that I would recommend. But if you do most of your hunting from a blind or a stand, and especially if you're looking for that longer barreled gun to do more of that long range shooting, then the Psycho S20 Hunter should definitely be a consideration. MSRP for this version is right around 1700, but the black is right around 1400. And I have seen it on sale for as little as $1,100. And I have to say it is absolutely an awesome rifle. It shoots crazy accurate groups. It fits extremely well. I am gonna take a little bit off because it isn't really the most ideal gun for me for what I wanna do. I'm gonna have to give, should I buy this thing, a 4.5 out of five. Hey, thanks for watching our Saco S20 Hunter review video. While you're here, like it, comment, subscribe, tell all your friends about us. Go back and watch a bunch of other videos. Make sure you check out our website, reviewthisthingtv.com. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Go Wild Threads. Check out our Amazon store, our hauler store. As always, thanks for watching.